Hello everybody and welcome to English Grammar with Amir sir and uh, today we are going to switch to the ninth standard now from this lecture for the next two at least because we are going to deal with the chapter 1.2 on uh, demand from students. I dealt with the unit 1.2 for the 10th standard. Now this is the unit 1.2 for the 9th standard. Now this lesson is uh, the Swiss family Robinson and it is a very important uh, request from the students because it's a chapter that's interesting but at the same time you have to explain the things that happens uh, the, the sequence the story it's a delightful lesson it's based on a book uh, written many years ago i want to share more about that but before that thank you so much for your emails that i have received but there are some homeworks still pending so make sure that you finish your assignments on time guys i'm still waiting for those okay so let's get started what is the topic at hand today this is the topic at hand the swiss family robinson unit 1.2 what are we going to deal with in this lecture along with this uh, chapter is of course we are not going to finish the chapter we'll as usual divide it into two lectures so this will be the first part and in the next lecture we will finish this lesson what uh, we will also study in today's lecture, I promised you, remember, in the last lecture I said that we will talk in depth, in detail about short vowels and long vowels. So this will be the uh, time, the, the lecture where I discuss it. I am sure I will cover everything within this lecture, so there will not be any need to carry that forward to the next lecture. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this is the job at hand, the unit 1.2, the Swiss family Robinson, lecture by myself. Let's get started. About the author, I told you the textbook does not mention his name, but uh, he is Johan Viss. Guys, this is Johan. I, you better make the pronunciation as Johan. This, this J makes the year sound, okay? Johan Viss. And very important because, as I have mentioned, the textbook doesn't reveal that. The textbook, I think it, the textbook reveals that at the, the first paragraph, but not at the uh, heading normally or at the end of the chapter. So it's just in somewhere in the first paragraph, I believe. And this is uh, the copy that you will find. It's the 1851 American edition of this book the Swiss family Robinson. The lesson is titled the synopsis because synopsis is a summary. Guys, I want you to understand that word first. Is it not? It is, they call it the synopsis. So synopsis is nothing but the summary. I think that's the first meaning you can write down or jot down for today. Synopsis is a summary. So the entire book, of course, is very interesting. You can go ahead and read it whenever you find time. But uh, for the moment, at least, we will look at the highlights of what happened in the in the story. It's a work of fiction, mind you. And uh, what else do we have here? Well, he was a Swiss writer, and that's why Swiss family Robinson is imagined some own countryman. And Swiss writer, I mean, he belonged to Switzerland. By the way, that's a demonym, is it not? Remember, I've taught you this word, guys. Demonym. Okay. India, Indian. Switzerland, Swiss. So that's a demonym. The derivative, the, the native of the country, the derivative from a country. Uh, Japan is uh, Japanese. Uh, England, you have English similarly. You have Switzerland and Swiss. What else do we have? He passed away in 1818. Uh, the birth year is 1743. There have been movies, guys, made on this book. This is so popular, this book, Swiss Family Robinson that uh, I believe this one is 1940. You can correct me if you can actually Google this. This one is um, relatively um, newer. I think I think this is by Walt Disney. Yeah, it, it does say that, yes. Walt Disney, guys, here you can see that. It's uh, Disney Pictures. And so you, if you, if they are available online, I'm not sure, I've not checked that, but you can watch them as well. Once again, before we proceed, this is Johan, Johan Wyss, W-Y-S-S, Johan Wyss, remember that, I'm sure you found this interesting. And now about the story, guys, what is a story? 
the story is about the robinson family who were traveling in a ship remember we are talking about uh, short vowels and long vowels today so they were traveling in a ship what did i just say guys they were traveling in a ship they were traveling in a sheep they were traveling in a ship okay so they were traveling in a, a ship and what happened they had to confront a great storm and as a result the ship sustained damage you can see here everyone is uh, evacuating their attempts to rescue themselves the family then made vessels out of the tubs and along with a few essential things arrived on an island you can see what uh, this these pictures show and here you can see that they actually made uh, a vessel they made some kind of a boat or kind of an arrangement and they reached an island you can also see the island here somewhere mind you they also have a couple of uh, pet dogs with them here they are their names will also uh, be known soon the story is about their new life so once they reach the island now they have to adapt to the new environment is it not so that's the story about how they adapted to the environment their experiences and important question is will they be rescued what happens at the end will they come back to the world as we know it or will they be left stranded at the island forever so that's what is for us to find out we will do that but that probably will go in the next class by the way did you listen properly to the way i pronounced this word environment that is much better rather than say environment it's environment that n is not silent there it's better you say environment the n is not silent environment rather than environment the n is not silent all right do uh, is there any entry here i don't think so this is just what is the gist of the lesson so i don't think i need to give you a special minute for this but just remember that this lesson will be about the robinson family and how they would adapt and how th they did adapt to the island and everything they, they had to start everything from the scratch basically so this is uh, an interesting lesson there's no doubt about that allow me to proceed this is the first paragraph and actually i think it's the second paragraph where yes you have this name is it not johan wes i told you they have not uh, mentioned it at the start but they have definitely mentioned it in the lesson the first paragraph the first uh, second paragraph rather okay as usual 100% attention is undivided attention is expected let me start The Swiss Family Robinson is a well-known adventure novel that people of many countries have enjoyed for more than two hundred years. Guys, that's two centuries. Okay, it has also been made into graphic novels and films. Guys, I've already shared that with you. If you remember, yeah, previous slide. The novel written by the Swiss clergyman Johann David Wyss is not just an adventure. It aims at teaching young people values like self-reliance, determination, love for your family, cooperation, and prudent use of. Guys, this word I think we studied in the last lecture as well, but of course that was a tenth standard thing. Prudent means showing thought about the future, acting with wisdom. okay prudent use of resources remember they had very little resources or rather limited resources when they actually arrived at the island it also has good lessons relevant in natural sciences good husbandry and by the way relevant means connected or related to and husbandry is not related to husband husbandry means management of resources cultivation and breeding livestock management as well that's why you must have heard in science about animal husbandry so overall husbandry means uh, how you manage the available resources and cultivate the crops managing the livestock everything and it becomes very important when you are in a situation where you are all by yourself you are all you have is it not because there's nobody there it's not populated at all you are there on a desolated island so a desolate island rather so let's see what happens now is there any other entry here uh well there is no other entry but there are three meanings to write down let me explain the other words as well guys self reliance is to become self dependent the other word is determination which means 
never to give up or not to give up soon show endurance love for your family cooperation guys if you don't cooperate in such situations the survival will become very tough is it not so the family had to use the resources very wisely they had to cooperate with each other and make their lives meaningful until some help uh, was to arrive is it not they they were optimistic and that's one more quality actually they did not give up hope they were very optimistic they were positive about life they were sure that they will you know go through this first of all they battled the storm remember then they made uh, a vessel kind of a boat and then they have arrived at the island and now they will uh, continue to lead a good life with whatever is available until help arrives so there are things to learn here okay now there are not many entries so please allow me to go ahead if you want you can pause okay pay attention some elements of the novel do stretch reality to a certain extent so you can see that there is some element of hyperbole but we must consider that it is a work of fiction i told you guys work of fiction fiction is a work of literature describing imaginary events or people guys it's not real it's the writer's imagination but he does it so well that he almost makes the characters come to life for example harry potter it's a science fiction there is no real harry potter anywhere right it's a work of fiction so what did we study was the meaning of fiction guys very important fiction is work of literature work of literature even in movies you can say work of art let's say describing imaginary events or people that is the meaning of fiction so this is a work of fiction and not a fact file so this work of uh, imagination given below is a synopsis i have already told you about this word synopsis is the summary an outline of its basic story there is nothing much here pause the video if you want to write down the meaning of fiction but allow me to go to this next important paragraph now this is a big one i would expect you to give me your 100% undivided attention now we are getting started with the characters guys william elizabeth and their children had been traveling in a ship when the ship was caught in a great storm the other passengers evacuated without them guys evacuated means left the place of danger for a safer place to go away evacuate to empty a region you might have heard of this is it not if there is a cyclone warning or something the authorities will have the area evacuated they will shift the civilians to a safer location so when the ship sustained damage the other passengers evacuated themselves they made their attempt they they fled the scene to some safer place some safer location and so obviously this robinson family will also will have to do something similar they did that william and his family including the young children guys children is the plural you never ever say children's remember that it's very embarrassing one child becomes many children you don't end up saying children's publics peoples some words are plural some words are singular by themselves so child is singular children is plural people is always plural remember that one person many people remember it that way so that you don't make any embarrassing mistakes let's see what else so we know now know some characters here including the young children who are they fritz ernest jack and franz were left to survive alone they weathered the great storm waiting in the ship's hold now uh, hold is a place in the ship guys they just found shelter in a place somewhere in the ship and of course the ship did sustain damage so they could not be there for a long time so they did take shelter in the hold for some time later they went to uh, they, they left the ship the ship survived the night uh, they the ship survived the night and the family found themselves within sight of a tropical desert island now what is this word tropical let me come on cam for that guys tropical you all know if i'm sure you've looked at the atlas or you've looked at the the map 
Uh, you have the longitudes and the latitudes. You also have the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Sure. The place between those two is known as a tropical region. Always remember that. So this is all that I had to share about this tropic thing. The next morning, they decided to get to the island they could see beyond the reef. Now, what is this reef thing, guys? Reef is a chain of rocks just above or below the surface of the sea uh, that you see. The chain of rocks, okay? It is the continuous chain of rocks that you see. They are just above the surface or just below the surface. That is what a reef is. With much effort, they constructed a vessel out of tubs. Now, I am sure, guys, you've seen that uh, uh, picture, is it not? They used the tubs to make that vessel or a, or a small boat. After they filled the tubs with food and ammunition. Guys, this word ammunition is important because normally you will feel that it's a supply of bullets and arms and weapons, shells. But here it is something that helps to put a fight. Now, they have to battle, is it not? They have to manage this survival. So, it's a sort of a battle. It's a fight. Now, to put up this fight, they are going to need resources. And so, they put the important ammunition in the tub or, or they carried whatever they could with them. That is their ammunition. So, something that helps you put up a fight is ammunition. It is in this sense that you should take this word ammunition, okay? And all the uh, all other articles of value they could safely carry, they rode toward the island. By the way, toward and towards makes no difference. Toward and towards is exactly the same. Well, this word is definitely island. It's not island. Two dogs from the ship named Turk and Juno. Remember I showed you there are a couple of dogs they had, pet dogs. Swam beside them. The ship's cargo of livestock. Livestock are the farm animals. Guns and powder, carpentry tools, books, a disassembled pinnace. Now, what is this disassembled pinnace? Dis disassembled is a damaged or broken small boat. Guys, I'm sure you've seen the movie Titanic. The smaller boats which often are for the rescue or for the emergency, those kind of things. That's a, a pinnace. And disassembled is broken. Of course, when the ship sustained damage, even those small boats, you know, uh, sustained damage. But whatever the Robinson family could manage, they did it. And now they, 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 they rode towards the island. Guys, let me know if, if you ever, you know, were to face such a situation, how would you feel? What would your thoughts be? Hmm. Share, share via email or on in the comments, whatever. This is a good uh, imaginary uh, work. Disassembled pinnace, remember that, okay? And uh, provisions had also survived. They had something to eat, some resources available. And so they now find themselves on that island. Now let me, uh, I think there is a grammar entry here. There it is. They weathered the great storm. Guys, what do you mean by this word weathered? The word weathered means to successfully go through something. So they had to battle the storm and it was a great storm. Imagine the a big ship sustained damage. Is it not? So it was a great storm but they went through it. So they weathered it. Weathered is to successfully go through a problem or a tough situation. Weathered. So that's what the lesson is saying. They weathered the great storm. So what is the, the command here? Change the voice. Always look at the action word. The action word is weathered. So you start after the action word. So the start will be over here. The great storm was weathered by them. You have the answer here. I think you deserve a minute to make a note of all of this. Is it not? Yeah, sure. I will concede a minute for this. Be quick with the entries. Let me just restart the timer. There you go. And I will join you at the end of this minute.
under 10 seconds now okay your time is up i have no doubt that you were able to do the needful kindly allow me to go ahead please over the next few days william that's the father William attached the floatable old kegs. Now, what are those? Guys, kegs are small cylindrical containers. That's a keg and of course, plural will be containers. You can see here the small containers, okay? Uh, the small barrels. Barrel is another good word, guys, you can use here. Barrel, B-A-R-R-E-L. To one another and built a bow that curved around them. The family had landed successfully on the island. They set up a tent and softened the floor. Guys, it's softened, okay? Soften the T. Remember, silent. Soften the floor with arm loads of grass. That is a lot of grass. They cut and spread to serve as their beds. So they made it soft. They came to a groove of trees. Guys, what's a groove? Groove is a group. So groove of trees means a group of trees. Is there any other entry here? No. So guys, look at this... Uh, indigenous plan that goes to show that if you show uh, if you keep presence of mind you can actually go through a difficult uh, situation with some confidence so the family thought that okay these are the available resources we have those barrels they are wooden so maybe we can make a kind of a makeshift boat and then actually manage to row and reach the island that is in sight and that way we will we have a chance of survival so always remember that if you keep your cool if you keep your presence of mind you will definitely be able to weather difficult situations yeah we learned that word remember presence of mind is important guys that's why they say uh, that uh, you know brains are better than bronze at times by bronze i mean the muscles brains better than bronze you have to keep your cool so that you can think calmly and then come up with a solution even in the most drastic situation if you have a calm head okay you will find something you will find things resourceful or you will turn them resourceful if they are not tell me one thing those barrels they had did they were they kind of a boat or a ship no but they used them as vessels and they had made an arrangement that ensured their survival. This is what you can learn from such situations. Always keep a calm head and uh, you will be able to fight even in bad times. Okay, what else do we have here? As I said, there's no other entry. Allow me to go ahead. You can actually pause the video, guys, if you want to make a note of these things. One tree grew what looked like gourds. Guys, gourds are, um, you know, uh, very in various varieties kaddu in uh, hindi bhopra in marathi but these are gourds so what happened the the father told fritz the gourds would make excellent bowls and spoons and they cut them into various utensils guys if you cut this portion uh, you can actually turn it into some sort of a receptacle, is it not? What did I just say, guys? If you cut the board properly, okay, the uh, it can act as a receptacle for you to hold things. It can act as a bowl or you can uh, cut it into slices and use that as a spoon. As I again will remind you, this is presence of mind. They don't have the crockery with them. They have to make good of whatever resources are available. And so they thought that gourd is a very good thing. If we can just cut it, uh, we probably can turn it into a bowl or some sort of a receptacle. Guys, I'm using a very good word here. Receptacle. Spelling for you to find out. T keep it in the comments. Receptacle. The spelling and the dictionary meaning of it. Receptacle. All right, guys. It is for this these things that you must attend my lectures utensils is just container okay any other entry no nothing guys i'm going allow me to proceed to the next one please 
After some days, Elizabeth informed William that she wanted the family to move to a safer place. Guys, safe, safer, safest. So this is comparative degree. Their current camp was not only exposed, but also very dry and hot. So this is a not only, but also line. They will ask you to make a rewrite using as well as. It will be very simple, is it not? So their current camp was exposed as well as very dry and hot. I repeat, their current camp was, you will eliminate this, their current camp was exposed as well as, here you will make that replacement, as well as very dry and hot. This is how you will use as well as here. Okay. If they built a house up in one of the large trees, they would be safe from jackals. Again, an important thought. Instead of staying on the ground, the mother, I think, uh, very is, is quite right that we should set up a house or some kind of a shelter and abode at some height so that we would uh, get safety from some of the wild creatures that might be out there. Okay? Yeah, there's no human around, but there's a possibility of a jackal or any other animal that can cause harm. It's a nice idea. Okay. What else? From Jackals. She described a perfect tree for the project. One whose trunk was nearly 40 feet in diameter. The branches were very long and extended straight out from the trunk, making them perfect platforms for a structure. Later, when determining the height of the lowest branches, the father taught the boys uh, geometry, geometry and how to use triangles to measure big objects. Guys, you can see here that they actually uh, did some calculation here. I've shown it in the uh, image. They actually found out that the lowest branch should be about 30 feet off the ground. And if we have these branches which are running parallel to the ground at a certain height, at a certain angle, it would be great for us to construct something that looks like a house for us. It will provide us shelter. And so the father here has uh, taught the kids some meaningful geometry hmm. and how to use triangles to measure big objects so maybe he must have used the Pythagoras theorem in fact it is the right time to say that Pythagoras the Greek uh, mathematician is given the credit of uh, the Pythagoras theorem but it is very important that I tell you that I think the Indian mathematicians many many centuries ago knew about this in the even the concept of trigonometry is was known in india first before these modern scientists published it and they got credit for it uh, the example is quite interesting let me take you to the image here well the way it is described for trigonometry in the indian books is that they imagine this structure as a tree and then there was a, a peacock here or a bird here and uh, there was a, a snake here at this point and then so how, how what is the distance between the bird and the serpent and that was the hypotenuse so i am sure you are getting what i am trying to tell you so the indian mathematicians many many years ago knew the concepts but in the modern um, in the modern era these guys are given the credit but as an Indian, I'm proud of this, that if you explore, you will find that all these concepts have Indian roots and origin. So proud uh, to be an Indian for this purpose. This is the legacy we have. This is the legacy we have. And we have to be proud of this. Of course, even gravitational uh, uh, you know, force. Newton is given the credit for that. You know, an apple fell and then he thought, why did it come to the ground and not go up? But uh, in the Yoga Shastra, you tell me, don't we have what we call as a Shirsasana, where we actually, uh, uh, the head down and the feet up thing, it's completely upside down. We knew that that will uh, have a better circulation of blood that will enable that. So there is definitely knowledge about the concepts in Indian books. You should be proud of that. Okay, let's get back to the story. So they used this knowledge and so uh, they thought that 
you know a certain tree they must have chosen a specific tree and they thought that they would construct their house there later when determining the height of the lowest branches the father taught the boys geometry and how to use triangles to measure big objects he measured a, a defined distance from the trunk and then calculated angles using several measured rods determining that the lowest branch was 30 feet off the ground so maybe something like this i'm not sure is 30 feet but something uh, like you see here in the image but that again i am very appreciative of the spirit of this robinson family what a spirit they have a never say die attitude they are confronting the challenge they are confronting the situation is it not not a problem situation and that is the way to look at it in my last class i did tell you that it is better if you give the right term so instead of calling it a problem well you better address it as a situation and then you know what to do in a situation rather than dismiss it as some problem is there any other grammar entry here uh, let me go ahead and check it no nothing here guys kindly allow me to go ahead there is hardly anything to write here sure you have understood by the way the men noted guys this is noted a silent k noted noted a rope at certain intervals and attached pieces of bamboo in each knot so something like this guys they made a ladder thus they created their ladder father returned to the beach guys remember we are going to talk about the long vowels and the short vowels okay b e a c h is beach b i t c h is beach beach very important slip sleep very important we will talk at it uh, about it rather at length when we actually come down to that discussion at the moment let's continue with the lesson and collect a drift wood thinking it would be uh, perfect to build a sledge guys sledge is a vehicle a transport vehicle on runners rather than wheels guys so these are not wheels exactly at the base here you see this will help the vehicle skid or slide what did i just say the vehicle will skid or slide so instead of the wheels you have these runners and that exactly is a sledge i'm sure you understood it from the image okay later they used it to transport material i told you this is some kind of a transport Uh, vehicle so this is sledge remember that in and they used the runners instead of the wheels this is why you need the teacher to explain the chapter the lesson is so interesting but maybe when there are words where you repeatedly have to look at the dictionary then the interest gets killed so when the teacher is explaining it uh, it makes it interesting because you just quickly come to know what they are rather than you having to search everything all by yourself and then in the uh amidst that you kind of forget the whole plot sometimes that happens so that's why it's important to focus when you know te your teacher is making a point it helps all right so that is a sledge is there any other entry here no entry guys allow me to go ahead please meanwhile elizabeth announced that the garden she had been tending guys what is tending taking care or looking after the garden she had been tending was producing healthy plants corn melons corn melons pumpkins uh cucumbers they you know these are pumpkins by the way here they all were already growing so nice they are able to sustain themselves there the next day only the father and fritz traveled to the woods that is to the jungle area exploring and finding such exotic plants exotic very different uh, as one with waxy fruit from which candles could be made they are making arrangement for the light during the night time okay fritz discovered a tree exuding exuding is giving out or emitting a rubbery sap it's a, it's a sticky fluid from which his father claimed that they could make boots Mm so now slowly but steadily they are fulfilling the basic necessities of man as you know is it not uh, food clothing shelter so they 
somehow are getting you know they have come to terms with it that yes this is how we have to survive until help arrives so mother is tending a garden and soon there are vegetables not vegetables vegetables and uh, father went to the jungle area got word and also they were in search of uh, a rubber like uh, substance they could make some kind of boots or slippers for themselves so that they could wander amazing fighting spirit there amazing i like uh, this fighting spirit really it's wonderful never give up like that guys uh, is there any thing here apart from this mm, no nothing but i'm going to give you a minute over here on this slide just to make a note of the things here okay just about a minute your time starts now i'll be there with you at the end of this minute Under 10 seconds now. And your time is up as usual. I'm sure that you made a note of all of the things there. There were three things, not a lot to write really. I'm going to proceed now. Give me your 100% undivided attention guys. Thinking ahead of the next winter, father decided to create a place safe from the elements, a strong storage spot to protect themselves and their belongings. Fritz came up with the idea of a cave, not finding one. They first tried to find a cave guys, but they did not find a natural cave. They thought of carving out their own cave in the rock abutting. What's that? That is sharing a common boundary with their camping site. So it was very close to where they were staying. They decided to carve out their own cave. It will take time, but it's a brave decision, guys. Abating, okay? On the smooth face of the rock, father marked the dimensions. That is the calculation, the measurements, okay? For an opening and they picked away at the hard surfaces with their axes, chisels, their axes, their chisels, their hammers and shovel. Guys, these are the tools I've shown here, okay? Axes, chisels, hammers and shovel. Over the next several days, the family cut windows in the rocks to allow for cross currents of air and for sunlight to enter the cave. When they had finished, they had four rooms complete with a fireplace. They now had a new winter home. Hats off to these guys. Absolutely hats off to these guys. Guys, remember one of the qualities that we read right at the start, I think the second slide. We were talking about cooperation and teamwork. Not one person could have done all of this. They needed to cooperate and make good use of all the manpower they had. Mom is playing her part. Dad is playing his part. The children are helping out. I'm sure the guard dogs are playing their part. So this is amazing. That is what has made everything possible here. And uh, really, I appreciate what they've done. Now they have a safe place for the winter. Another thing, the family was not careless. Okay, they did not have a lethargic approach. They did not have a callous attitude. They knew that the winter was coming and they were very wise having a foresight or a vision about the future that what are we going to do? How are we going to sustain at that time when the temperatures are extreme? Remember we are talking about a European thing here, is it not? So the temperatures are extreme. So well in advance they started planning and they executed it. So in your life as well, do not assume that okay, don't procrastinate things. What? Don't 
procrastinate things that is postpone things put them for later plan them do them at the right time so that when there is need you have the resources you already have something planned out think about the future something like your exams uh, there is uh, there are students who are very particular about their studies they know that their exams are approaching what is the kind of time that they have for their preparation and they'll plan their study okay imagine that uh, there's some artist who has to perform let's say about five days or six days from now then what should that artist do he or she should prepare for the performance is it not so similarly over here what has happened is that the family has you know has they have foresight okay not foresight foresight in the future so they planned and they actually made a cave for themselves and now they have a home i'm so proud of them this is brilliant absolutely brilliant okay mm, let's see what else do we have is there any other entry here no guys there's no other entry at all so i think now it is the right time for us to switch uh, to the the next topic at hand and what is that next topic that next topic is short vowels and long vowels but before that let me i think uh, cross currents is just the breeze that comes from the ocean and uh, nothing else i was just checking out guys if there is anything else that is worth making a note of all right then i'll take you now to the notepad it's very important guys you also have some writing material handy let's go to the notepad and um, i'm now going to deal with the topic short vowels and long vowels okay i repeat short vowels and long vowels let's start the first one is fill and feel what did i just say let me first uh, put the heading guys short vowels and long vowels and our first entry what is the first entry guys our first entry is fill and feel what did i just say fill and feel look at the stretch fill and feel difference right so let's get to the notepad for this distinction guys if you don't know this short vowel and long vowel thing you might just make a very embarrassing blunder that's why i am dealing with this topic pay proper attention now you tell me what do you do okay please there's a blank the water bottle you tell me will you feel the water bottle or will you fill the water bottle that is such a nice example is it not what will you do i am sure that you will fill the water bottle and not feel the water bottle ooh we won't feel the water bottle we will fill the water bottle very important so now you know what i'm talking about there is a definite difference make a note of all of these things guys please fill the water bottle and you can fill in the blanks the next one i'm going to talk about is guys should i present it as an exercise oh well, yes let's do that guys let's do that this will be great fun uh, i will rather have it as an exercise that is a great idea so this was the first one let me write the second one next one is <clears throat> which one is the short vowel and which one is the long vowel here that's your next question for the for the second one that's your question which one is a short vowel which one is a long vowel do that the third one
options capital right hmm what can I give you as the next example I have blank this movie before which option is correct guys notice how there is a subtle difference between their pronunciation that's why we are dealing with this topic is so important okay this case these are your options next please I'm sure you'll get full marks here but the more important thing is uh, the the observation and you should make a note of how there is a definite difference between these things guys before we proceed to the sixth one let me ask you a good question Corona test or Corona taste? Corona test, right? There is a difference. So you might say things and then wonder, what did I do? Where did I go wrong? And did I make a, an embarrassing mistake? You might think you did not. But uh, someone who knows English heard you. And you made, a, you said something that you did not want to say. Is it not? Imagine you ask someone to feel the water bottle. The person will just probably hold it to uh, his or her bosom. Is it not? Anyway, so let's continue with it. We were now on, yeah, we've done five on to the number six. Uh, the sixth one is. Yes, here I have provided you with three options. Yeah, but one of them is a short vowel, the other two are the long vowels. So let's see if we can still manage to choose it correct or, or rather choose the correct option. Next one, please. Options, please. Again, three options, guys. I think the number seven will be greatly, greatly appreciated by shopaholics. Greatly appreciated that sentence number seven there. Ooh, certainly. Next one, please. Um, well, let me give you this one. Oh, yeah, sure. Nice. Guys, I have no doubt that you are learning this. You can write down uh, these questions with me because I am going to reveal the answers. But let's just uh, continue for the moment this writing examples. We'll check them together. Okay, then the number 10, uh, 
Oh, let's call it. Okay, I think I'm, I've given you 10 over here, 10 of them over here. So try to do them and I'm going to actually concede um, a couple of minutes. I think that should be uh, perfect. Let's say three minutes. I'll give you three minutes of time guys, starting now. Okay, three minutes of time starting now. Let me uh, bring the countdown timer. There you go. You can see the countdown timer has started. I'll join you and be with you at the end of these three minutes. All the best. We'll check then. Last minute guys, last minute. I have no doubt that you are going to get full marks here. Okay, under 10 seconds now. And the time is up. Okay, so guys, uh, time for us to um, check the answers. The first one, what is it? Please fill the water bottle. So F I double L. That is correct, is it not? Absolutely. The second one, lick, L I C K, is the short vowel and uh, leak is the long vowel. Hmm? So, lick is the short vowel. I'm sure you have written something like this. That was the question, is it not? And leak is the long vowel. Okay. Now, this one is definitely fill. Next one, the number three, what is it? Dash one of you. Each, right? Each one of you should know this by heart. I have dashed this movie. I have seen this movie. I have seen this movie. No. Next, dash quickly. It quickly? No. Eat 
quickly. She achieved this dash. She achieved this feat. But which one? This one or this one? She achieved this F-E-A-T. Guys, did you get this right? You have to be honest. The products are cheap because there is a big what? Which one? Which one? Number two, number three, which one? Because there was a big sale going on. Not big sell. Not big sale, S-A-I-L. Big sale, S-A-L-E. Hmm, sure, Shopaholics got it right. He took a what? He took a dip. Okay, he took a dip. Should have not given it with capital letters, but anyway. Don't. Now, this was really something that is so easy, is it not? Please, what? Don't hit the dog. Don't heat the dog. Well, are you a monster? Don't hit the dog. And the last one, she was enjoying her beauty, what? Beauty slip? No, beauty sleep. Now, guys, did you get 10 out of 10? What was your score? And you have to be honest about it, guys. Don't lie about it. Always be honest. Did you get all of them right? Especially where the ones where I gave you three options. Did you get all of them correct? So that was about the long vowel and the short vowel. I asked you the uh, I asked you ten examples. I will quickly probably uh, share a few more examples, but not in a way of exercise. Just will um, update you with those some more examples and the homework for you is to find five more. Guys, I'm going to share one more, which is kin and keen. What did I say? Kin and keen. So I'm saying K-I-N and K-E-E-N. Kin is your relative. Kith and kin. And keen is very acute, very sharp. Keen vision. Eagle has a keen vision. So do I. Without glasses. So keen. K-E-E-N. And kin is K-I-N. Uh, the other example, um, okay, full and fool. What did I just say? Full and fool. By the way, what's the spelling of the foolscape paper? Do you think it is F-U-L-L-S-C-A-P-E? Or do you think it is F-O-O-L-S-C-A-P? What is the correct spelling of foolscape? The paper, your answer sheet in the school. Sure. What is the spelling of full scale? Let me know. You're free to Google it. And uh, one, one thing is for sure, the answer will surprise you. Uh, let's deal with uh, a, a couple more. I, to I already talked about test and taste. Please remember that. And uh, one more is uh, reach and rich. Rich and reach. So the Robinson family reached the island, okay? And the rich people were traveling in the ship, something like that. And of course, beach, very important, not beach, beach, okay? I think I've uh, talked enough about it. We are almost going to hit the one hour recording mark. But I want to share one important thing before I conclude this lecture. I've received... Uh, uh, messages from students about their reduced syllabus what the state board has uh, planned to do and rightly is that they want to reduce the syllabus for the 10th standard and something like that will be done for 9th standard as well from your school for the 10th standard definitely there will be circular by the board for the from the 9th standard perspective you, the schools will decide all the schools have the liberty so you can share with me um, on email or leave a comment or on my whatsapp number if you have my number about what your school has planned what are the chapters that they have planned to omit what are the plans uh, what are the chapters that they plan to keep the retain this will help me prioritize what videos I make so we should for the 10th standard I have learned that I think 4.6 the gift of Mejai such an, such an interesting chapter, but because of this COVID-19 thing, the board has decided that they'll cut short the syllabus. And so they have decided to actually not include that for this year. It's there. The video still is valid for 10th standard, but not for this year. I will confirm that circular, by the way. 
I've just been receiving messages, but this was just an example. So what I expect you guys to do is tell me about those chapters and what your school is planning right now. You can leave a comment. And uh, well, lastly, everything is coming online and I'm very happy. The stand-up comedians are uh, presenting their shows online. The teachers are presenting their content online. Or the singers are taking online concerts. Great idea. That way, the people who love you will be able to watch your performances in regardless of what talent you have. I mentioned three categories. Uh, so, well, technology is helping us out here in these times. Um, well, you should thank all the people who are putting in their effort uh, and to ent keep you entertained or to give you knowledge. Anyway, they are no less heroes, by the way. So, as usual, before I end this, I'll urge you to take care of yourself and uh, we will meet again soon. Uh, I'll record a lecture on Saturday now and we will bring this lesson to a conclusion. Do not, do not, do not forget to please update me with what your school has planned. What chapters are they planning to omit? What chapters are they planning to retain? And also about writing skill. Are they going to reduce the writing skill as well? Let me know. I have received a few messages about 10 standard. I'll confirm that in the next class. All right, then we'll meet again soon. Take care.